What does it mean to live comfortably? Our first visit to the Matava and Turanga Towers, a site that is steeped in history and conflict, showed the current sombre reality of life for the residents, derelict rooms, eerie silences, and an overwhelming sense of discomfort from the towering masses above. The project aims to respond to the current residents' dissatisfaction with their living conditions in examining the coalescence of architecture and landscaping. Through cross-referencing trends in survey responses, the issue lies not necessarily with the internal size of tenancies, but rather the lack of usable amenities both within and surrounding the towers, which is ultimately denying community interaction. Our strategy involves constructing a set of elevated concrete paths which act as both circulation and destination points. Residents and visitors to the site can gather, traverse and rest in these intimate spaces, the shared journey becoming a catalyst for engagement between the local and wider community. Research into the use of the public domain at Teacher Hickey Park revealed interaction as a result of coinciding paths and functions, as described by Jan Gill's categorization of activities in public spaces. Therefore, maintaining these existing pathways are of the utmost importance, striving for a gentle and less invasive solution with new interventions. The design solution aims to reunite fragmented amenities such as the community garden, as well as offering much needed aged care support and promoting meaningful social interaction right at the resident's doorstep. The perception of colour is a phenomenon experienced daily. Traffic lights, signage and clothing all form a specific response. Contrary to the conventional Geneva colour emotion model, it is far too simplistic to generalise colours directly to emotion such as red always inciting passion or anger, or green to mean envy and greed. Wilhelm Wundt explores these responses as the tridimensional theory of feeling, the three effective dimensions being pleasantness and unpleasantness, excitement and inhibition, tension and relaxation, controlled largely by hue, saturation and tone of colour. The combination of these dimensions along with the identification of innate psychological preconceptions such as a bias of green for nature in leaves and grass defines the response of the beholder. Sergei Eisenstein in Montage and Architecture creates a parallel between film theory and architecture, speculating that the viewer, in both cases, experiences a series of visual frames. A viewer's perspective of a space can be controlled in the same way as film, adopting the use of colour and vectors. The observer's journey through architecture captures a series of perceived still frames which are mentally pieced together to create a narrative. The observer, in their movement and pace, defines a time signature leading to Goethe's famous statement that architecture is frozen music. This is demonstrated most accurately in film direction where colour is used in multitude of ways. It can elicit emotions, aid in creating spatial depth and promote visual interest. Through the utilisation of these factors, the designer can orchestrate and guide the viewer along a journey of the making. Contrast can be used to control depth. Density and spacing can be used to promote focus. Colour can be used to bolster interest. The architecture and, by extension, the landscaping becomes the expressive medium. A multitude of varying species are used to ensure that the color and the wayfinding strategy is effective throughout all seasons, maintaining engagement throughout the year. The trees are arranged according to the direction of the path and used as visual connections and guidance through the different spaces. Plants of different sizes, height, and densities form a varied spatial landscape and inform occupants' pacing. Some ornamental plants can attract people to stay, while transitional shrubs frown the in-between space to traverse. In the choice of plants, a semi-open space for resting and viewing can be enclosed by shrubs. Trees can provide shade and insects such as bees and butterflies are attracted by flowering plants, enhancing biodiversity. Specific species can also be used to accentuate seasonal characteristics such as maple for autumn and jacaranda for spring. Planting also acts as temporal tokens. The inherent cyclical lifestyle creates variations in foliage, color, aroma, and form depending on the four seasons. This enhances the landscape composition, offering new distinct spatial experience throughout the year. Deciduous trees can offer much needed shade in summer, whilst in winter, the fallen leaves open up new visual paths that were previously obscured, burying perceived physical boundaries. Planting is used to invite and guide the inhabitants along the winding journey through the sky. Contrasting colors are scattered intermittently throughout the journey, 
acting as signposts to be followed. Clusters of these colours are used to invite visitors for extended stays. The planting becomes an integral means in navigating and experiencing the journey as a whole. We begin our journey from the stretch of island between Matavai and Taronga Towers, refurbished into a space of gathering that uses the scale and character of trees to ground person-to-person -person connection and to serve as a convenient place for residents to socialise. The precast concrete structure is evocative of organic tree branches, establishing an artificial canopy which not only offers a sense of enclosure for the observer below, but also instills a sense of intrigue for the spaces above. The concrete mass is hollowed at the extremities of the branches, achieving a reduction in weight and strategically allowing for additional depth of soil or water. Drainage is cast into the structure and expels directly into the stormwater sewage system below. This allows for a greater diversity in planting options and ensures the experience is indistinguishable from the ground plane. Through the control of enclosing walls, the scale of trees and visual vectors, the verticality of the journey is concealed. The structure's function is analogous to a tree structure. Water flows within its trunks and its canopy provides shading and opportunities for habitation above. The concrete is inseparable from the planting. The architecture becomes the landscaping and the landscaping becomes the architecture. From this platform we ascend into the new three-story mass composed of a restaurant, aged care centre including medical centre, and physiotherapy and mental health support for local and the wider community. Following the Blue Wars, visitors are prompted to continue to ascend onto the trail. Paths are designed to signify one-way circulation so that wayfinding becomes obvious and intuitive. The lookout platform offers a panoramic view of the southern portion of the site and acts as a visual anchor to the journey. Signifier plants are placed near entrances to welcome guests. The top portion of the three-storey mass consists of the tower link as well as private community gardens which have been moved up from the overshadowed south onto the north side rooftop so it is closer, more accessible and provides yet another opportunity for residents to participate and socialise through the common interests of growing crops and other botanical species. The communal garden attracts experience of cultivating produce for the residents of the tower. There is plentiful space for gathering and sharing between members of the community. The greenhouse also offers a more controlled environment to nurture plants throughout the colder months. Turning right, the trail begins. The initial portion of the trail takes visitors downhill into the valley. This space permeates a high tempo and can be rented out for events such as fashion shows, weddings and award presentations, generating revenue for the Towers Trust. At the end of the gradient, we arrive at the heart of the trail. This portion of the trail celebrates a blend between the domestic and the shed, between inclusivity and intimacy. The sense of scale that shapes the undulating spaces are human-centred and is built to be inhabited by picnic lovers and avid readers. Planting schedule in this space focuses on the tactile and fragrant, soft to the senses. Shade tree species are selected to filter down light without overshadowing the ground and project a sense of comfort to the space. The platform connects to the existing Taronga Tower on the fifth floor. The double height lobby entry opens into the former common room connecting the journey to the residents' tendencies. The circulation then opens to an open dining space for the restaurant which overlooks the landscaping below. The height difference creates a visual hierarchy and acts as an intermediary between the ground floor and the towers. Travelling down the lift, the journey continues within an underground tunnel, the curve of which obscures the immediate path ahead. The tower eventually opens to a large sunken plaza with a central pond refracting and projecting the light from above onto the Safit. The isolated space is utilised for quiet rituals and meditation. Obscured from the noise and clamour of the people above, providing a rare section of tranquility in an unlikely urban landscape. So what is comfort? Comfort is intimacy. It is safety and enclosure to the human scale. It is the ability to traverse and navigate between familiarity and discovery. The Waterloo Trail offers a grounded yet engaging sequence of spaces, of journey and experience for the residents and establish a lasting, meaningful connection to its wider community. A place where residents, both current and future, will be proud to call home.